and even begin mounting the transmission or anything we need to uh, change the rear main seal but not only the rear main seal but also the pilot bearing because this thing just feels extremely rough um, I already got a new one got all new seals and everything so just gotta pull this pilot bearing and I think this little, this should go in like this but I think we can just use one arm and just pull it like that see if that works And I'm just gonna verify that they're both the same. Um, sometimes they can send you the wrong one, you never know. Uh, yeah, looks like they are exactly the same, so perfect. And I mean, you can feel the difference. This thing is butter smooth. This one is still okay, but you can feel it catching for sure. So we just have to tap that in. seated on that little flange on the inside little lip uh, so that's all done now like I said now on to the rear main seal I'm gonna take the whole usually you can just take this little uh, seal here but I'm gonna take it all off because I have the seal that goes behind um, the little plate as well so take all that off uh, regasket this piece right here um, reseal it all This has bolts going through it that's <laughs> wow that's my mistake completely forgot about these bolts going through it so take those bolts off and this should separate like i said i'm going to show you guys all the mistakes i make just so you guys can possibly try to avoid them So I'm gonna be using the single mass flywheel just because it's lighter. It's gonna be better for faster revs. Only issue with the flywheel from the E30 is that as you can see back there, it's gonna be hitting the uh, oil pan. So most people what they do is they machine this piece down to a few millimeters. Um, what you can also do is take the spacer out of the dual mass flywheel from the M52 and put it behind this and it'll space it out just enough. So that's what we're gonna be doing right now. Like I just said, this is the dual mass off of the M52. Um, as you can see, this little spacer right here in the front is just, um, it's like riveted or plug welded in. Uh, all you have to do is drill that out and basically put it behind the flywheel. Uh, it almost looks like the E31, but the E31 goes in the front instead of the back. And the only thing different that we have to do on this space right here is we have to drill one of these holes, any of these holes really, um, just to make it bigger so it'll fit on this dowel over here. Like 
on the back of the engine. Take the flywheel off. Like I said, this will fit right here. Give us the extra mi couple millimeters just to be able to fit, but we have to drill any of these holes really. Um, I'm gonna choose one of these with a lot of space in between, um, just in case I mess it up, and it'll fit in this dowel pin right here. So, so as you can see, when we put the spacer in, um, it gives us just that extra few millimeters right here, and it'll spin freely as you can, eh, maybe. As you can see, now it spins without any problems. clutch on and we realized that we forgot the plate that holds the starter in over here so all these bolts are gonna have to be taken back out and we're gonna have to redo it but that'll be for tomorrow okay so for this specific build uh, I decided to go with a spec stage 3 plus clutch so this specific one can hold up to 590 foot pounds if I'm not mistaken which is a little bit of overkill since I'm only shooting for about 3, 350. But the reason I went with the 3 instead of the 3 Plus was because this specific one is a full face clutch disc as opposed to the other one, which is a 6 puck. The 6 puck can be a little bit more difficult to drive. Um, this one should be a little bit more, will allow me to slip the clutch a little bit better and just be overall better for daily driving. So most clutches are going to have uh, two sides to them. Um, it's very important that you align this correctly because if you put this in backwards, um, some clutches will work, but they'll sound terrible. Other clutches will just not engage completely. Specs pretty cool because these they actually label it as you can see flywheel side. Um, so it's almost impossible to mess this up, but you know anything's possible. Just really got to pay attention to it. Um, once that's done, then we can also put on the pressure plate. Uh, don't forget to clean the pressure plate surface because it is um, coated with anti-rust uh, oil from factory. So make sure to give it a quick brake clean and a quick uh, cleaning, and then we can throw it on. <laughs> 